good afternoon everybody Josh with Josh's Lawn and Landscape here once again I want to thank everybody for tuning in taking time to watch uh, thank you to all of my subscribers who uh, have helped me get to that 200 mark I know I've mentioned it in the video or so before so I appreciate each and every one of you thank y'all for taking the time to subscribe thank y'all for taking the time to watch and gonna try to get some footage today uh, got one new small lawn that probably won't get any footage on that one till we just kind of verify with the property owner since it's a new new lawn and one bigger lawn that I've done some video and in before so maybe try to get some different angles or maybe some trimming footage see what I can do with that one and we've got some rain in and out of the area so we're gonna see if I can dodge that and also got some maintenance things coming up uh, if I happen to have any rain issues we'll do some maintenance and things like that on the 590 and sharpen some blades things like that maybe get some footage of that so uh, question on the X590 uh, for anybody out there that has that particular mower uh, or maybe the 9 or 594 or 584 I think it's the other numbers or something like that in that 5 series um, it has the hydraulic deck lift but one issue that I've had with the mower since I've had it is getting the deck level right um, pulled it into the shop on the concrete checked the deck level uh, set a level across it and it says that it's reading right I've gauged the tires up and so but it seems like every so often it's just like it suddenly is back out of level I don't know if it's got something to do with the hydraulic deck lift I have noticed that, that um, tends to drop every once in a while so like if it's parked for a little while and get back on it to load it up or something or unload it off the trailer then you have to pull on the the deck lift and make sure it's all the way up so let me know if y'all have had any issues with that with the deck being difficult to level if there's something maybe you need to put spacers in or some particular something that needs to be tightened up or anything like that i'm just kind of at a loss i've never had issues with a mower deck uh, level this this often it's only got a hundred and 110 hours right around on it and I've probably messed with the deck level on it four or five times already so it's a good solid machine it lays down a good cut um, very comfortable ride but just uh, it's a little it's a little frustrating with the deck so maybe it's just something simple that I'm missing but again if y'all have had that issue leave a comment down below let me know what y'all's experiences are and uh, so just kind of a question to lead off the video with gonna see if I can get some footage here in a little bit once we get going going to pick up the, the big truck and trailer with the mowers and see what can get knocked out so y'all stick around all right buddy in the shop so as you can see outside it's raining so check the radar it's in and out don't know if i'm gonna get to go do any mowing so got the 590 position here gonna do some maintenance on it and i'm gonna go ahead and do a 100 hour review so i'm gonna turn the camera around talk a little bit about it show you the hours and we got a maintenance kit and talk about a couple things um, about the mower and I guess just general experience and an overview of it for the first uh, 100 some odd hours it's on it so here we go so here we are we got the John Deere X590 and it is a 54 inch cut it has the Carlisle HD field tracks Rear tires is a 24 by 12 by 12. It has a 121.1 hours, so a little beyond 100 here for the review. 
it is power steering as before so just an overview of some things you can see this is your steering cylinder right here it's power steering um, we purchased the power flow bagger system so you have your double stack pulley for that and the cover so when it's mounted and we have added the front brush guard here it just has a simple pull the pin on the rod slide the rod out and it lays the brush guard down so you can open the hood added the John Deere steering knob here which helps uh, with the maneuverability with the power steering does an excellent job and has the high back seat which has a uh, spring suspension simple simple setup on it and actually very comfortable seat and the high back is actually very good for kind of relaxing a little bit on the mower so it has the i think it's is it 16 inch front tires i believe i may be wrong on that but let's see if i can see it anywhere on the tire i want to say i'm pretty sure it's a 16 inch front tire so Carlisle Turf Masters on the front. It has a locking rear differential. That's what this pedal is here. Uh, again, it has the hydraulic lift for the deck. So you do your deck adjustment for your height of cut right here with this knob. And you either push down or pull up to raise and lower the deck once you have it set. This is an EFI setup, so there is no choke. Uh, here's your throttle. You speed it up, slow it down. It has actually has a cruise control button here, so you can throttle along with your hydrostatic drive, forward and reverse, and push this button in and let off the pedal, and then it will lock it in place if you have a big open area that you want to mow. PTO switch, ignition. You've seen this got the digital readout on the screen. It has adjustable steering, so you can pull this little lever up here and slide it forward, slide it back. On that, the seat slides forward and back as well, and the springs are adjustable here. If you can just turn them a little bit slide them back into the back slot or you can slide them all the way to the front spot so it has three firmness settings I guess is what you would call that for uh, someone who may be a little heavier or a little lighter weight so what we're going to do here on the front is again if you want to one thing about it is you cannot lift the hood up with the brush guard up but the brush guard is simple you remove Actually, this other pin is actually the easier one to pull out. You remove this pin and just slide this bar out. You can see that slides right out. And then you just lay it down, just like that. And then center grab and lift the hood. So, yeah, I'm gonna blow this off. This is a, again, a 20, five horse Kawasaki is EFI and good strong engine and actually has a very good cut on this machine as I mentioned earlier in the video I've been having a little bit of issue keeping the deck level just right uh, gauge the tires uh, front and rear use the deck leveling tool which is actually under the deck under the seat here sorry take the little gauge here and your leveling tool and what you'll do is you'll take the gauge and there's three places on the deck there's one right here see the little nodule sticks out you put your gauge under there and there's a hole right here that you slide your deck leveling tool through and it goes into the top of this little shaft right here there's a hex headed insert there for the tool to go in and you turn it oh, sorry about that you turn it uh, one way or the other to raise and lower that side of the deck 
and there's one on both sides for the back and then the front is leveled with the u-bracket there you see it goes through the, the clamps here and what you simply do is you have a nut here and there's one right on the back side but you can't see through this bracket but right there on the back and you tighten and loosen each one in succession back and forth to raise and lower the front of the deck and so you do both sides level it out and you can set a level across the front check it make sure you got it good and then tighten everything back up so fairly simple to do the deck leveling it's just uh, i've done it a couple times and you still seem to notice or i've seen to notice a few ridges still being in the lawn and i know some of that is due to uh, the lawn's not being completely level in a couple of places, so um, Just something that seems like in, at certain times there's always seems like I have to do a little extra leveling on it So just curious on that again. I asked earlier, you know, if y'all have had any instances with that uh, Being an issue or not Let me know your thoughts on that Overall it's a very solid machine again very comfortable seat I uh, love the EFI the uh, HD, the field tracks are excellent gripping tires, and so that works real good when you're on uh, like wet grass and things like that. You don't get as much spin as you do with sometimes with the zero turn. So it has a little storage compartment here on the side, keep a few things in there. It latches um, again, hydrostatic drive. EFI power steering Let's see just trying to think make sure I covered everything um, I have not done I want to do an LED headlight upgrade, but I have not done that yet and Also one other thing I think I'm going to end up doing on this one is you have the uh, Reverse disengage or I'm not sure what you call it, but if you say if you're mowing along and you want to back up without having to shut the blades off and turn them back on you press and hold this and then you start to back up and you can let off of it and then once you start to go back forward then the next time you may want to back up you have to do that again but there is a way to bypass this particular switch with the wiring so um, I'm gonna look that up and gonna do that at some point but this uh, is not getting as much use through me um, now that I have the the Toro and the 920 so again here's the other um, right let's see where's it at right here is the little nodule for the deck height adjustment so you set your deck gauge under here and on this center Deck height adjustment. It's it's indicated that the two and a half marker is Where you do your deck leveling position? So you'll set your gauge here and then you'll actually drop the deck down and then you would use your Wrenches and your deck tool. There's the other insert hole to adjust each side of the deck on the rear and then adjust the front so I believe the the nuts on the front are 18 or 19 millimeter. I want to say it's 18 millimeter. So you can just get a open end box end wrench and a socket and you can loosen the back one with the wrench and then tighten or loosen the front one with the socket. So a deep wall socket. Uh, let's see some other things about this mower. Um, not a lot else to go over it's fairly reasonably accessible here for is your oil dipstick right here on the side easily accessible this can this little guard here can get in the way just slightly if you're trying to do a uh, like a cup wrench just to kind of work it in um, but it's got flex to it so you can pull it back a little bit slide it right in there so you're easily accessible to your oil filter pretty much as well spark plugs on either side right here 
again easily accessible for maintenance and air filter is right here on top so you just simply turn this lock and that lock cover pops off and I do believe since we're changing this today we'll take a look at it yes Whew. Well, worse than I thought it was but and you've got your little cloth cover over your air filter and this little wing nut to tighten this clamp over the hose so you'll loosen this up slide your air filter out we'll put the new one in set your cover back down and turn the two locks everything is pretty reasonably accessible on this machine you know with the hood up it's easy to get to the deck um, one thing that is um, a little odd is say on my 920 the pulley grease points are in the top of the pulley here so it's a little easier to get to them whereas on this particular machine the pull the grease point is right there on the side so you had to kind of get up under the pulley to it and but they did point them all out so this one is this one is pointed this way the other pulley is pointed out to the right and the front pulley is pointed towards the front so they did try to point them in a direction uh, with the design to make them slightly more accessible uh, so that's a good thing about it I have not tried to utilize the wash port so that's just kind of a extra little add-on thing some people say it works some people don't uh, I haven't used one in a long time so I think this is a five and a half or six gallon tank and again 25 and a horse half 25 25 and a half horsepower EFI so it's a solid machine you can easily utilize this to to run a, a, lawn, a lawn care business it will get the job done no problem and um, it actually does a, a very good job laying down a good cut um, I have gone to the Predator blades, which Gator blades, same thing, but this is the John Deere actual version um, that they sell with the uh, Gator style blades. So this is actually that's actually the same blade that I run on my 920. So those are my thoughts uh, in general on the John Deere. the x590 with the 54 inch deck so a few high points again excellent ride good cut quality it's got good power and um, really like the EFI and the power steering so those are some some excellent things about it my only real issue probably would be just sorting out what may be off with the deck I don't know if there's somewhere that I may need some spacers or uh, there's a certain thing that maybe somebody's noticed that it's got to be adjusted from the factory other than the regular deck height adjustment so that's my hundred hour review for the John Deere x590 so we'll put that in the video we'll do some other maintenance on it um, again we have the John Deere maintenance kit so this has oil oil filter spark plugs fuel filter and oil everything's in there so we're going to do a complete run on that that's one thing that i do with my machines is i do an oil change every 50 hours i think uh my good friend mr gerald with clean and green he just did it for his hustler raptor sd and said he does the same thing. I think it recommends a hundred hours on the oil change, but I've just I've always done mine every 50 hours. And same thing with my 920. Every other oil change, which is every hundred hours, I will do a kind of a tune-up or a full maintenance setup. So new oil filter, new spark plugs, new air filter, new fuel filter, clean it all out, and uh, change that every hundred hours. So. That's my thoughts, my 100 hour review for the John Deere X590 again. And stick around, we'll try to get some maintenance footage and let me know what you think. Thanks y'all.
so we're doing our maintenance here we've already changed out our spark plugs this is the large I think this is a let's see if I can find the, the size on here oh there it is this is the 13 16 spark plug socket so this is the bigger one and one spark plug on this side we got both those changed we've changed our air filter and we blew this area out before we changed it so clean that area out fresh filter and everything in there and just changing our fuel filter which is right here goes underneath the filler neck for the oil which is right behind this little side panel which just kind of snaps in right in this area and it has one screw that screws in right here through the panel and it is an eight millimeter uh, socket that goes on it so that's all you need for that and then just kind of pull it out it just kind of snaps in right there and right there over that and then you put your screw back in it and it kind of hangs down here so since we got that off we're gonna get the oil change so we're gonna change excuse me, we're gonna change our filter here and this one you can just put a small pan or I've taken a milk carton or coffee can and set it right up under here and you just twist this and actually take this is the plug right here on the end it's almost like a wing nut and you just turn it and take it all the way out and the oil runs right out the end and when you go to drain the oil one good thing to do remember is loosen the oil cap on the filler neck so that it'll relieve the vacuum on it and let it drain out so we're gonna get that taken care of and we'll be back all right so we got our oil changed new oil filter again like I say you just simply twist this little wing lock nut off screws out it drains right out the filler neck be sure to break your oil cap loose and release the vacuum on the engine and it actually allows it to drain a lot quicker I just simply take a one gallon jug because it's a little odd to get up under this rail because when you take the filter off it will run back through this slot right here in the frame so you got to be able to get up under this and I actually have the deck down at the moment so I just cut this as a makeshift drain pan so that I can get it out and get the, the oil drained out of it so I got it taken care of and what I use same thing I use in my 920 is the John Deere Turf Guard 10W30. I run this in my 920, always have, and that's what I've done on here on the 590. So we'll stick with that. It's done, done well. I've got over, well over a thousand hours on the 920, so it's done a good job. So we're gonna get our oil put in, check our level, make sure we got it uh, in the operating range. Turn it on, let it run, cycle the oil through the engine a little bit, and we'll wrap this one up. So, we'll be back shortly. Alright y'all, real quick, we've got to do the oil, change the oil on the 590, and it's the only thing we got left on the maintenance on it. I did have to adjust the deck just a little bit on one side, so we're going to see how that plays out now that we got that done. <coughs> Excuse me. Going to sharpen couple of sets of blades for the 920 and I've got a turn this around we've got a new set here for the 1025 so we'll get the the deck off and change those blades and also it's time to do an oil change on the 1025 so we'll probably get a little bit of footage on that and put this video together I've got a couple of sets of blades here uh, here and here that we're going to try to sharpen and I sharpened mine with the uh, angle grinder with the sanding disc on it. So I've got a one on here now. It's about a 40 grit. And here's another one that I have. Actually says it's a 36 grit. So we'll get that done. Change the oil in the 1025. And uh, check everything on it. And wrap up 590. So a couple of things left to do. And I've got some, some waste oil actually that I'm going to take to the local dump and then come back and finish everything up. So stick around. We'll get it wrapped up here for long and we'll be back. All right. 
hope you can hear over the fan but as you can see we got the deck off of the 1025 so we'll change the oil in it too but just doing some more maintenance y'all gotta keep this stuff up and as you can see these blades are about basically shot so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these off got a new set right here and use my earthquake 3 8 drive impact got that from harbor freight this is a 18 millimeter bolt that holds each blade on so we're gonna take these off and put on a fresh set and we'll be right back all right so we got the new blades on the deck and i actually greased each of the pulleys so grease those clean them up and got it ready to go back under the 1025 so got the oil changed in the 1025 this is a three quart oil change <coughs> excuse me so you have your oil filter here got it changed and one interesting thing that i found out about this in case you didn't know and uh, is you see the orange cap here in the top of the crankcase it is the oil filler cap but actually if you take this panel off there is another oil filler cap and you can't really see it but it's up in up in here about right in this area behind this panel so there are two oil filler caps on this machine so i'm thinking that you take this panel off and you can do everything for the oil change right here the plug is in the bottom of the pan up underneath and then if you need to add oil you can utilize this cap up here up top so got the oil changed in it uh just kind of lightly blew out the air filter and the screen on the front everything else is good so so we got the maintenance done on the 590 i hope you enjoyed the review let me know your thoughts and a little bit of maintenance on the 1025 we're going to put uh the deck back on it so it'll be ready to go and i'm not going to get any footage of sharpening the blades this time but i'm going to sharpen a couple of sets of blades before i wrap it up and that's pretty much it for today so i didn't get any mowing today so just to move jobs to tomorrow and see how it goes so the rain was kind of in and out i uh, just probably wrapped up raining 20 30 minutes ago uh, another trip come through so that's part of it so it'll be a little bit maybe close to a half a day behind depending on how tomorrow goes but just have to see how it goes again thank each and every one of you for subscribing and taking the time to watch and i hope this information was helpful if you've got any questions about anything that i did or that i may do maintenance wise that i didn't cover and you want to ask please leave a comment below and Leave, com leave me some more comments also I've, I've done this once before but leave me some comments if there's also something that you'd like to see um, I'm going to try to do some pruning videos and things like that especially now that i got my tripod so if there's any other videos that you'd like to see maintenance wise or uh, certain work if i got something coming up then I'll try to do some videos on that so leave me some feedback and again thank you once again can't say it enough for subscribing for taking the time to watch and y'all take care, be safe, and we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks, everybody.